Okay, great. So we've got uh, the green face moving around. Now let's look at creating the, the movement of the angry face. What we want to happen here is we want angry face to pick a random X and Y position and, and to move there uh, repeatedly. So pick a, pick a random X and Y location, say here, move there. Once you're there, pick another random X and Y location, move there, and just keep repeating that behavior. So let's look at how we can do that. In, uh, when we were moving uh, the happy face, we were responding to uh, an event, which was the user touching the screen. Now, with the, uh, with the angry face, we, we, we want to transition it around, but not in response to a, to a touch event. Just we want it to keep continually running and, and picking a random X and Y location. So we're gonna, it's going to be a, a group of instructions. So I'm just going to create some space here and create another group of instructions or a function. I'm just going to call it move angry. Um, again, you pick your own function names. Perhaps that's not the best name ever, but it'll do for now. Open, close, round bracket. I'm not going to put the word event in there. Uh, you'll see why in just a little bit. We'll leave that for now. And I'm going to create another transition. So I'm going to say transition oops, transition dot dot two and then our brackets there now this time we're moving angry so angry comma and then the open close curly brackets I'm going to say time we'll make it one milli I mean one second again and then here x equals now here's where we can get pick a random number to move to so math dot random you'll see that highlights as a keyword and then we pick, when you use math.random, you pick a, so we want to pick a, a random number, but we need to give it a range. So we give it a lower value. So I'm going to choose 80 and an upper value. I'm going to choose 880. Again, these values are hard coded for an iPhone 4 screen. Uh, again, for to cater for, for several different devices, have a look at those um, websites I showed right at the start, but we'll just hard, hard code this for now. And so we're going to pick, a, a random number between 80 and 880. Um, again, the iPhone 4 screen goes 0 to 960 uh, on the X axis horizontal values when it, when the phone's on its side. And let's do the same thing. So I'm going to copy that. So copy, place in a comma, and paste it. Okay, now I've got word wrap-ons, but hopefully you can still read this okay usually I wouldn't have word wrap on the program I just prefer every one line to be one line but for the sake of the video I've got word wrap on so y equals then continues here math.random now we'll leave that actually we might make that say 60 and the height of the iPhone 4 when it's on its side is 640 so I might make this say 580 okay and okay so we've got a function move angry transition.2 move the angry graphic take one second move to an X position of a random value that you've picked between 80 and 880 and a, a Y value that you've picked between 60 and 580. And we'll save that and we'll come back and control R restart. And you'll see how, how the green face still moves around but, but nothing happened. Okay, so here's where we'll talk about function calls. How do we activate a function? So if we, if we come back up, the touch screen function is, is called whenever someone touches anywhere on the screen. Okay, that, that's the way that function is is run. Well, this group of instructions is activated. With move angry, we want, we want to activate this group of instructions just all over and over, basically. Whenever uh, angry's reached its, its, its destination, we want to um, run the function. Um, but it, it, it's not an event-based function. It's not like, like touch screen is called whenever the touch event occurs. Angry, it's not, it doesn't work like that. It, it's a different type of function. And it's just a, a user-defined function. And so actually the way we're going to activate it is just typing that name of the function, move angry, open, close, round brackets. So the function call is, is slightly different. You'll notice we have open, close, round brackets here, whereas when we called touch screen, we didn't have those open, close, round brackets. Slight difference, but same idea. Other thing is, well, because touch screen was an event based um, an event based function call we have event in here so we can obtain some information about that event 
we don't have event in here because move angry it's not an event based function call it's just it's just that one we call when we want to and we do that by putting the name of the function underneath the function which actually is a, a good point notice the calls to the function go underneath the function okay it wouldn't um may or may not work but it probably won't work if if you put the the call to the function above the function and the idea there is that when the Lua file's read, the, the phone is going to read it top to bottom. So the idea is you, you call only call a function after it's loaded into memory. So if we were to call, say, put the call to move angry way up the top of the, the file, well, it might try and call move angry before the function's had time to load into memory. So always put the call to the function underneath the function itself. Okay. So here we go. We, we're calling move angry. So let, let's see if this... This is going to work. Come back, restart it, and there we go. It worked, but it only worked once. So, um, how do we get it to keep keep going on and on and on? Well, there's a really handy um, attribute in a transition. So I've come here. So we go y equals math dot random sixty five eighty. Now, still inside the curly bracket, but after that uh, round bracket, I'm going to put another comma. And we're going to say on complete equals, I'm going to type that function name again, move angry. All this is saying is when the transition is completed, call the function again. So call the whole whole function again, which will sort of in essence loop the whole thing over and over. Let's just try it and see if it works and then we can talk a bit more about it. So restart it. Here we go. So now whenever uh, angry face has finished its transition, the function gets recalled, which just picks another uh, random x and y location. So what's happening is we have the initial call to move ang move angry to kick this off and that'll pick a, a random x and y location to move to. It'll move there. Then when the transition is completed the on complete recalls the function which just sets the whole thing off again. Okay so let's um, let's add a second um, angry face. So I'm gonna just copy that and then Let's say for this one, angry two. Okay. Now here, uh, you can just leave. It's still the same, even though the variable name is now angry two, to distinguish it from angry. By the way, you can't have the like each variable name has to be unique. Otherwise, when you use the variable name, the the phone won't know who you're talking to. So each variable name has to be different and unique. But we can use it, it's just loading in the same graphic, so we, we keep that the same. Okay, then, um, actually let's give it a slightly different X and Y position. So let's make that say 840 and that 520. Alright, let's 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 save that and make sure it's just coming up. So, okay, so we, we've got the second one there, but it, it's not moving around. So let, let, let's fix that now. So inside the move angry function, I'm just going to copy... Copy that whole line, make some space, paste that underneath and just say angry 2. Okay, and that it's just doing the exact same thing. It, it's pick an X and a Y location. One thing we have to do is, is remove, so from that comma going forward, remove the on complete function call. We only want that to be called once. We're going to run into problems. If they both, like if, if angry and angry 2 are both trying to call move angry when they finish, um, it's going to cause a problem because if you think about it, the function moves both of them anyway. If they're both trying to call the function and the function's moving both of them, then we're going to just end up with, with too much movement because we've got two objects calling a function that already moves both of them. Uh, so we only need, you could have the on complete either here or in this one, but you only want the call to the function once because it's going to move both of them anyway. And hopefully that's not too confusing. Okay. So let, let's try that now. Okay, great. So they're um, they're moving around, but so far nothing nothing happens when um, there's no collision, basically. So very quickly, let's just add that. Okay, so I'm going to copy. I'm going to come up the touch screen function and the runtime call to it. I'm going to copy the whole thing, come down, paste it. And change this so where it says there I'm going to change this to a collision event change the call to a function to a function called on collision change that name 
to there. And there we go. So what we can do uh, what we can do now is I'm just going to take that out. Now, what should happen now is we say print and then we'll say collide. Okay, so let's see if this is going to work. So we'll save it. We'll come back and run it. Okay, so let's make them... Okay, so we should have... Hang on. All right, we should have definitely had some collisions now. So let's go to the output and it should have printed out. But see, we're not getting anything. And the reason is... If you're going to do collisions like this, use a collision event, you need to include the physics engine, the Box 2D physics engine. So, right up the top here, let's just quickly add the physics engine. So, we're going to say, create a variable, local physics equals require, in quotes, physics. Oops. Okay, and then we need to say physics.start. Okay, and with that done, we should actually know we need to do one more thing here. So, every graphic you want to be to interact uh, with the physics or things like collisions, we need to say physics add body the name, which is here, happy, comma, whether it's static or dynamic. Now, let's make this static for now. Okay. Actually, let's make it dynamic. All right. I'm going to copy that and paste it there. And then we're going to add angry to the physics or as a physics body. And then copy that and come down here. And we're going to add angry too. Okay. So, let's... Now that they're, now that we've included the using physics and we, we've added our graphics as... Uh, well, we've, we've used the add body... Uh, instruction to add each of them and made them all dynamic. Well, now down here, our on collision function or using a or detecting a collision event. So again, whenever anything collides, we uh, we're going to call collision. We're going to call this function, okay, on collision, and, and run here. And at the moment, it should print collide. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I've saved it. Come back here. Okay, Control R to restart, and one problem we noticed, I didn't press anything. Notice we, we've lost our, our green smiley face. Let's start that again. And what's happening is when you add, and you'll notice these guys are, are colliding and interacting with each other, which we'll have to fix up. Um, when you add, watch it again, see how it's, it's actually got gravity applied now. So with our character there, as soon as you add something dyna and as a dynamic, like here, happy or physics dot add body happy is dynamic it's now got gravity applied to it which in some cases a lot of cases is great but for this game we want to have a dynamic body um, for collision purposes but we don't want gravity applied so what we can say is physics oops, physics dot set gravity zero and zero. Now, that's gravity on the x-axis, gravity on the y-axis. You might be thinking, why to have gravity on the x-axis? But remember, it's not the real world, and having gravity on the x-axis might be really good for your game. So, um, we're just setting gravity to zero on both axes. axes. Okay, save that, and come back, and we'll restart it. Okay, and now, now it's just sitting there. It's not having that, that gravity issue problem. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to actually look at how we or how to deal with, with the actual collision and, and what should happen there. And then we'll be done. Okay, 